Where do you come up with the name Monster Beats? Uh, Monster Beats comes uh, when... Uh, That's a good name. Yeah, I like that. When I'm trying to... Uh, when I'm getting reestablished, uh, I'm signing up with ASCAP, and they said pick three names. And so I... What, what three names did you give them? I think I, uh, I had my <laughs> old company, which was Star City Productions, my original company, uh, which is Star City Productions. And then I said Monster Beats. I don't know what the other name was. And, well, Monster Beats. And they can't sent, be better than Monster Beats. Come they on. sent back the thing and said, okay, well, we'll approve you for Monster Beats. And so Monster Beats is a certified ASCAP. Uh, music publisher. I'm a certified ASCAP music publisher. Now, th this is the one I really want to ask you about. Uh, is Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? I think it's out of tab three or four, Rob. <clears throat> now, can you break that down for me? Yeah. I haven't, like, I haven't really heard much about him. Um, well, like little bits and pieces. Well, <clears throat> what happened with this was, you see, this is 2016. Mm-hmm. 2014, my life is in shambles. My wife is gone. My kids are gone. Uh, I'm homeless. And I remember my demo, and I had the record deal. So I put in for a Grammy. And some people decide they're going to play God in my life, and they interfered with my Grammy, my Lifetime Achievement Award for the Grammys. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to take it in a murder investigation. And I started investigating the Tupac and Biggie case right after they turned me down on my Grammy. And this was my question. Is Dr. Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? So first off, he has my creativity. It's not his. Okay. So that's part of the lucky. Now you're lucky you ran into me. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky you met me, you know? And I and and when I first came back to the industry, I called Dre. I called him. I said, hey man, I'm Ivan Law. I called his record label. Hey man, I'm Ivan Law. Uh I met Dre McCola Records on the original beat maker. They gave me his number. They called him. I called Dre. He never returned my phone call. So I reached out to him because I admired his work. I reached out to him. And so after I, no response and I don't get nothing, you know, hey, I need credit for what I did. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. So if you did something great in this lifetime, you should get credit for that. And so I said, okay, my question is, Dr. Dre, the luckiest man alive or a killer? So I wrote this now. And so I start out with the fact that I walked out on the record deal. Okay, and then I'm talking to Complex because they're posting a lot of stuff about what happened, why is everybody dead, yada, yada. So I'm saying, look, sudden uh, something, Dr. Dre has something new. After I walk out on my record deal, Dr. Dre has something new, and all of a sudden he does not need anybody. Why? Because he's got my music. When he wants to leave easy, easy dies. Easy, easy dies. But you you know what somebody would say, you know, just playing devil's advocate, and they would say, Ivan, you're just mad, you're 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 mad, and you're saying this because Dre didn't answer your call. I wish I was uh, just mad at Dre. Now, uh, Suge admits to poisoning Easy. He admits, really? Yeah, he admits. Ah. Scroll down, scroll up, brother, scroll up. Go no, uh, it's the other way. Yeah. Go go ahead. Go ahead, go on up. So they say Shug poisoned easy. Yeah, he admits going up, right here. Play that. Right. Why the bulletproof vest? 
Oh, it's not. Oh, no, that's just. It's your style. You've been in the no, can no, no, for a no, no, while. No, 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 no. That's what all the talk show hosts are wearing. This is a new thing, right? Yeah. See, if somebody's going to do something about it, see, right. technology is so high, right? Right. So if you shoot somebody, you go to jail forever. So the kids, you don't want to go to jail forever, right? Right. So they got this new thing out there. People sell them all the time. They got this stuff to call. They get blood from somebody with AIDS, yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that that's seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Is he crazy to say that on Jimmy Kimmel? You see, uh, you see, he's out of his mind. So he basically, at only the killer would know. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you have to, you know, who would have thought? Now, you, gotta, I, you gotta take that into consideration, because he's sitting there, he's saying... Yeah, making a joke of it, but well, knowing that, and then we're talking about yeah. Suge Knight here. We're not yeah. talking, you know. So, but but now you got to understand that Suge Knight started out as Dr. Dre's bodyguard. Okay, so Dr. Dre, uh, be, Suge Knight begins his career uh, as a subordinate to uh, Dre. Correct. So now, so he Dre get once out of his contract. Easy says. Dre Day is what? An easy payday. I'm going to get paid on all Dr. Dre's future work. No deal. No. Yeah, I'll let him out of his contract. Mm. Yeah. But I'm still going to get paid. Everybody don't know why, though. He's going to get paid because Dr. Dre has my sound. And that sound was acquired while Dr. Dre was with Ruthless Records. So he could take that sound with him no matter what. So no, he can't take it with oh, him. Oh, he can't take it with him. No, because Ruthless is really the steward of the sound of hip hop or the West Coast sound. Because it was Ruthless Records, Dre was in the contract with Ruthless. So when my demo was left on the table, that goes to Ruthless. That goes to Easy becomes the steward. That's right. That. That's right, Ruthless, right. So Easy would be the steward. So now, but once he eliminates Easy, now he doesn't have anybody to claim credit for this magnificent body of work. Uh, Easy, which I believe the real motherfucking G's, I think that's an Easy beat. I think that's a beat that Easy actually made. Uh, because he says, here's another fresh beat for your ass, Dre. And so they was in competition. Back and forth. They uh, was in competition yeah. to make a beat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. So so anyway, now, so Easy dies. Easy, the fastest A's death on earth. I thought Easy was poisoned because he died too fast. And then I found the Jimmy Kimmel clip, and it confirmed. How quick did he die? Oh, uh, what, what? Two weeks a week. Wow! Mm. You just get A's and die in two weeks. This is ridiculous. I don't imagine I'm still rolling around. <laughs> That's ridiculous because even Rock Hudson had a chance to fly around the world, which I say in here, and try to get treatment. Right, because it, it starts as HIV and then turns to AIDS, and even when it does, you still got you time. still got time. You, you know, maybe time. it's hospice or whatever, right? Yeah, you still got time, but he didn't have no time. Whew. Powerful batch. Boom. Powerful batch. It was, a, it was yeah. an assassination. He goes powerful batch. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. powerful. They got a high purity. <laughs> yeah, it was strong. <laughs> Maybe a little high, a little too high purity on that yeah, one, buddy. Yeah, it was strong. So, like he said, you get somebody who's infected with AIDS, they're uh-huh. about to die, and you shoot them with that, mm-hmm. and it's and so 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 now I see. So so now so he goes so he goes solo, and now the real truth is. The biggest lie that's told about my brother, my friend, the biggest lie that's told about him is that he left death row. It's the big lie. He didn't leave. Dre didn't leave death row? No. He was fired. Shook fired him. Shook. Mm. Yeah, there's a clip. Uh that I have, I have a clip of Tupac where he says, Tupac says it wasn't my, uh, it might be on the next one, Rob. Is it on here? I no, nah, it might be on my YouTube channel. My, you, you got my YouTube. Yep, I got it out for you. Yep. So. Look at the boss, he's the boss of death row. Look at the dog. You understand? But I'm the underboss. I'm the cop. 
Papa, that is my job, for the protection of all of death row, to do what's what best for the all of death row. And Snoop, to do what's best for all of death row. My decision wasn't based on I'm coming to death row, taking shit over. My decision was based on Ray not being there for Snoop doing his trial, and this is all for real shit. You understand? And, and that is, he wasn't producing shit. Other niggas was producing the beat, like on my album. Other niggas was doing the beat, and Dre was getting the credit. And I got to go on MTV and be like, yeah, he did this, he did that. No, he ain't do it. He is a dope producer, but he ain't working years. And I got tired of that. I, I didn't think we needed that. I, mean, I think we didn't need that. And he was owning the company, too, and he's and he chilling. He owning the company, he's chilling this out, fucking dick, eating pussy. I'm out here in the street, you know what I mean? Whooping niggas ass, starting wars and shit. Putting it down, dropping albums, doing my shit. And this nigga taking three years to do one song. I couldn't have it. But it was not my decision. It was Phil's decision. Phil's the one that, that was coming to me. Because I was soft on it. Like, you know, we're fucking, we just keep it in the dark. So, let me see. You got my YouTube up. Where, where is it? Uh... I still can't believe Shook said that on Jimmy Kimmel. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? No, that's not it. Where is it? That's all right. Just tell me what he said. So yeah. he, he says that Tupac says it wasn't my idea. He says, Shook, uh, that Dre was out he, with his words, sucking dick and fucking bitches. Yeah, I, heard, I heard Pac say that plenty <laughs> and, of times. Yeah. And while I'm in the studio putting it down, put whooping asses, making songs, and he's out BSing. And he's owning the company too, and and he said I got to go and tell everybody that he did this and did that, and he didn't do it. And he said we don't need that here. See, Dr. Dre is not able to do the work, and he has my idea, but he doesn't have the mechanics to perform and produce independently of others. Tupac so, killed him on Machiavelli. Yeah, against all odds, and I think bomb first. But, he went let me, in let me, on Dre. The, Dre made the, the mistake. Dre made if had Dre left Pac alive because the Eminem demo was submitted when Tupac was alive. I believe that demo was submitted when Tupac was alive. Eminem is the Elvis of rap. Hmm. Okay, so if Dre had a left Tupac alone, left Biggie alone, went and did his thing with Eminem, he still would have killed him. He would have smoked him because Eminem is the Elvis of rap. He would have, he would have, Tupac and, and, and Biggie would have had the black fans. He would have came in with the Elvis of rap. He would have had all the Anglo-Saxon fans. And the blacks would have been saying the same thing like they was about Elvis. Yeah, that one. You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't lying either. Yeah. Uh, really? See, see Eminem, nobody came like Eminem. No, that first album. Wow. Eminem got cheated because he didn't get. He, there was nobody there. Eminem, Eminem is a battle rapper. Yeah. yeah. There was nobody there for him to battle. And if there was, he'd smoke him. Yeah. With the the people that he was prepared to go against was murdered. <laughs> so he he's not there's nobody in his league. He's the Elvis of rap, man. That dude, man, he didn't have to do that. He he could have just went with Eminem and would still been the greatest. Is Eminem still with Dre? Uh, no, I, I think all those guys are independent now. Mm-hmm. Independent, right? Yeah, yeah. But, all that streaming changed everything. Yeah, it, 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 Shady Records. He got shady. He got shady records. So, you know, but those guys, uh, you know. There was a lot of unnecessary things because these guys are are great, you know. They're great. You know, you're dealing with real talent. They're great. Go to uh, the Hollywood Visual. This is good. All right, take me through this, uh, Ivan. You really put something really nice together here. Okay. Uh, this is uh, my uh, my pitch, my visual pitch for the movie. Hollywood, uh, the Tupac and Biggie homicides uh, documentary uh, into my investigation that led to the solving of the uh, cases. Uh, 
Uh, I have the book. The book is available. Uh, I have. Uh, there's a version where you can read it on Amazon free on Kim, on on Kindle right now, but I'm, I'm I want to rework it, and so you could pre-order the 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 newer version I'm gonna have on Barnes and Noble. Yeah, we have it up there. Uh, next tab is his book, I believe. Yep, right there, right? Yeah, yeah, you could pre-order it right there on Barnes and Noble for 19 bucks. And when will that be out, Ivan? Uh, I'm. I, Let's see, I'm trying to get it to, I got to work with the ghost writer and get it, you know, worked out. But if you want to read what I have now, you just have to go to Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, okay, cool, it's available cool. on, on Amazon now. So, and my claims are that Dr. Dre, now I didn't, I focused on Dr. Dre because I knew he was fake. And so, uh now the origins of the West Coast sounds uh, is what be a beat maker. Trying to the be the beat maker is what has led Dr. Dre to be the serial killer, the, the alleged. I'm gonna say alleged on your show, on this, uh, the alleged serial killer that I believe that he is. And, okay, 